Deck fans, Liam here. Today I'm going to just run over a few small tips and tricks for beginners and new Steam Deck owners that might be helpful. So let's get started. Here are my Steam Deck tips and tricks. First of all, you can hold down the Steam or the quick access button, the one with the three dots, to get a list of shortcuts. And these shortcuts actually work with both buttons to activate, not just the Steam button. An example is Steam plus X for opening the keyboard anywhere, and Steam plus the right shoulder button to make a screenshot. You can also hold down the Steam button and then move the right stick to have a mouse cursor at any time as well. And you can even press the Steam and B button together to force a game to shut down if you need it to. There's many other shortcuts, so don't forget to keep checking back on it. Now, there are plenty of games that are verified as either playable or fully verified, so they work great. But you can also check on a website called ProtonDB.com, Proton Database, for reports on unverified games, which is a fully crowdsourced collection. So anyone can test a game on Steam Deck or a Linux desktop and submit an entry on how it runs. Another big one that I'm going to suggest is to run the screen at 40 hertz and 40 frames a second, which you can do from the quick access menu. It's the one with the three dots. And then you go into the performance menu, which is the battery icon, and then you set it there. It gives you a really simple way to maximize the battery life with good performance. Now, a pretty important one, if you're ever going to take off the back of the Steam Deck and have a look inside or change the fan or the hard drive or whatever, one thing you're going to need to do is to take out the SD card. I cannot stress that enough. If you ever take off the back, take the SD card out first. I died a little inside when I killed a one terabyte card doing that. Steam input is your friend, allowing you to fully customize the controls of every single game you play on the Steam Deck. You can access it either via the controller icon on a games page in your library to the right, or while playing a game, you can just tap the Steam button, go along to the right, and go down to where it says controller settings at the bottom. Here, you can map every single button, the trackpads, the sticks, the stick clicks, everything. You can make them act like a mouse, a keyboard, you can activate the gyroscope, map the buttons on the back, change dead zones, and so much more. A good one to do is to actually map the buttons on the back of the Steam Deck to A, B, X, Y, so that when you are playing games, you won't need to take your thumbs off the sticks or the trackpads. On the subject of trackpads, you can actually use both of them together when typing using the on-screen keyboard. It's a lot faster doing that way. If you find the Wi-Fi is not working well, especially on 5 gigahertz networks, what you can do is try turning on developer mode and then turning off Wi-Fi power management. You'll see more power usage, but it might fix your issues. It is worth a try. The Steam Deck has a full desktop mode. You can hold the power button down for a couple of seconds and then select switch to desktop or press the Steam button, go down to power menu and select it there. A pretty cool thing that you can do is you can change the location of where screenshots are saved so you can access them easier in the desktop mode in a folder of your choosing. So in desktop mode, in the Steam client, you can go into the settings, select where it says in-game, and then change the folder to exactly where you want it to be. And you can also make it so you have higher resolution screenshots as well, as by default, the screenshots that the Steam Deck takes do have compression on them, and they don't look amazing. If you're going to be at home a lot, one thing you might want to do is just buy a long USB cable and a charger and keep it plugged in when you're gaming if you can. It will save your battery life doing it that way. If you're going to be using a newer Xbox controller over Bluetooth, you're going to want to update the firmware on the controller, otherwise it will not connect properly. So if you have an Xbox controller and you try and connect it and it just keeps flashing or connecting and disconnecting, go and upgrade the firmware on it. To install software in desktop mode, you should look for the Discover Software Center. This gives you a ton of extra software like Discord. And if you have games available on 
GOG or Epic Games, the Heroic Games Launcher available in Discover is your friend. It allows you to log in and download games and then run them through a compatibility layer. Just like the rest of the games on Steam Store though, your mileage may vary, not everything works. If you want to add third-party apps and games to Steam to launch it directly via Steam or in gaming mode, that's easy enough to do. In desktop mode, load up the Steam client and go to the big add game button to the left of the client or up the top to the games menu and then add a non-Steam game. And then all you have to do is select it from the list and then it is done. So those are my quick essential tips for getting the most out of your Steam Deck. Do you have some better tips for me and for everyone else? Let everyone know in the comments and be sure to like, follow and all that. Thanks for listening and I will catch you next time.